and go back and yeah. rewatch it or something. Yeah, sure. So, Besmer, can your job be to remind me at the beginning of the lesson every time to start with I'll, I'll be very happy to do that. Thanks. And then I'll make sure that the video links are out there. So I started recording just now. And then, um, and we'll share them every time after class. How's that? That's great. Okay, cool. So if I'm washing one dish at a time, how long will it take me? So say, say I'm doing something wrong. Say my little son, who's five, is learning to wash dishes. So his, my son's standing here. He puts them on the rack every time. Okay, let's see, where's the dish rack, okay? So he washes a dish, he puts it in the rack. He washes a dish, he puts it in the rack. How long will it take me to figure out if he's doing something wrong? Like hours, days, weeks, minutes, seconds? Where, what ballpark would you say? Someone who hasn't talked yet. Josh. Um. I I'd say if <clears throat> sorry if you're there with him you'll you you'll be able to tell pretty quick. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. You and why is it that if you're there with him why will you be able to tell pretty quick? Oh, uh you can just watch how watch his method and if it's incorrect you can fix it right away. Yes, good. Now what if I'm in a different room, Josh Fulmer, and I tell my son to load the dishwasher? And I come back an hour later, two hours later. What what can I do about those dishes if they're all done wrong? What are the options? Um, you basically have to redo it. <laughs> redo how many? All of them. Yes, exactly. Good. Thank you. Good comments. Appreciate you speaking up. So we have the same problem with software, believe it or not. So we have this loop that we talked about where we want to let customers give us feedback. So all of these steps lead to that customer being able to see the actual change we made. Now, if the change we made was a small one, how long will it take before the customer can give us the feedback about the change? What about the change you all made yesterday or the day before? How long did it take before the customer could see your change on the website? Someone who hasn't talked yet. If you change that CSS, how long before it's on the website? Josh Elliott? Uh, like five minutes before it. Yeah, five. Depending on how fast your uh, upload speed is server shenanigans yeah their download speed yeah five minutes so in five minutes the customer can see the change you made if you do a single change right now let's look at a different scenario so the top diagram illustrates what you all did in your exercise one change one pr one pull request now let's imagine in a different scenario in a large company where we have a hundred developers who are working on a feature together and we make them all release their code at the same time. So how long do you think it would take to get them to agree that to deploy the code? Days, weeks, months. So the problem is this, if we look at this workflow, the purple to the upper right and the blue to the lower right are going to be the bottleneck. Because if you have 100 changes and you have someone trying to test all 100 changes, they can't do it, not very quickly. And if you have to deploy all 100 changes to the website all at the same time, the operations people are not going to be happy about it they're not gonna be very excited to, to merge your change and affect customers because the confidence level is going to be pretty low that it will work. So the smaller the change is, the better, and the faster you can get it out, the better. And that's the point of single piece flow. That's what they call it in the book when you read about it. 
they talk about it in manufacturing, they talk about it in code. The idea is one change gets made at a time for the customer. Any questions on that or other comments? You guys are really smart, so I like hearing what you have to say. Can we go back to the workflow page really quick? Yeah. Let's see, which one? Yeah, that one. This one? Um, so is it then the developer? The developer is making the pull request, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then the quality assurance chain tests it, and then the DevOps. Is the one that implements it? Yes. Well, okay. in theory. So DevOps is a very ambiguous role. I'm going to tell you right now. It's very ambiguous. So what it means is different in almost every company. Um, in classic IT organizations, operations is the one who would, would push the change into the live environment. And that's the old school of thought. So DevOps is a movement that takes all these blocks and puts them in the hands of one person. That's my definition of DevOps. You will hear a million different definitions. But my definition is all these blocks are all one person now, everything. So the developer can literally make a change, test the change, merge the change, deploy the change. All those things the developer can do on their own. So this is not what this diagram depicts. It depicts a classic uh, IT organization, which is very common. And so if you see all these roles, then they're all going to want to do their job. And people will be frustrated if you try and do what they've been doing for 10 years or something and take it away from them. But what executives are finding, and the reason this book exists, uh, the DevOps Handbook, is that it saves money. When there's only one person, they can do everything. Um, it's not just because there's less people. You could have all these other people who are still there, still working. That's not the goal. The goal is that your change can get in front of the customer super fast. So, because what, what companies are doing is they're experimenting. Facebook, Google, uh, Twitter, Netflix, Amazon, they're experimenting on consumers. They're making changes incrementally to see how consumers respond to them. Do they buy more of these widgets? Do they buy less of these widgets? Do they sign up for more subscriptions? Do they abandon their subscriptions? And the experiment has to have a code change. So if you tell them the executive, Jeff Bezos, I, I need a year for that change. I need a year. He's going to fire you. If you tell him, I need a month for that change, he's going to fire you. If you tell him, I need a week for that change, he's going to think you're kind of an average guy. So what we're talking about in DevOps has everything to do with that scenario. An executive wants a change, he wants it now, and he wants to see if it works or not. He doesn't want you to tell him why you can't do it. It may sound harsh, but unfortunately, that is what most executives act like. Okay, cool. Good questions. I, I, like, yeah. I like that. And, and I think if you want to relate that back to the dishwasher um, situation, you know, that's, you know, Jeff Bezos, you know, if he's standing there watching you do your dishes, he wants to see that first dish get washed and get put on the dry rack and see that it worked, that it was the, that it was the right process. He wants to see that as soon as possible so that he can approve it and say, okay, good, let's keep doing it this way, right? That's the whole idea. When we say, when we say we want it fast turnaround, it's we want that whole loop to be fast, not necessarily that you got to work super, super fast. No, right. Right. It's, it's we, want, we want to find out as quickly as possible, did that dish get washed properly? And if so, let's keep doing it. Right. Yeah, it's a, like a holistic process. And if, if the organization's built right, you should not have to work faster. I'm glad you pointed that out, Brother Miller. It's not about you working faster. It's about when you write your code, does it get out there quick? Are other people stopping you from getting it out there? And if so, there's something broken with the way you're doing dishes. If, if 
you put them all in the dishwasher and they all come out with crud on top, you need to do something different. You shouldn't wash dishes that way anymore. Maybe you need a new dishwasher. It's not because you didn't do a good job a lot of the time. It's just because the process they gave you to do the things doesn't make sense. And the cool thing, I want to tell you guys something interesting. I worked with a bunch of interns at Ancestry, my last job. And one of the interns was saying how he felt like the CEO really trusted him. And, and the, the CEO let him make big decisions for the company. And this is a guy who's right out of college. He just, he wasn't even done with his degree yet. And I, I said to him, why do you think that is? Why do you think the CEO trusts you? And he said, well, I think she likes that we take risks because we're new here and we have nothing to lose. And he was talking about all the interns. And I said, well, that's really cool. You are really empowered to make changes in the company because of your position. And how do you feel about that? He said, I love it. I love my job. I get to come in every day and question how things work. And trust me, you will get hired to do that. You'll get hired to question how things work because you're fresh. You know the things that should be doing the way they should be working and companies will hire you because of that. So it, look for a boss that isn't just hiring you to blend in. Look for a boss that will empower you to make those decisions. That's my advice. Good discussion. Okay, so I wanna show you guys what we're gonna work on today. We're gonna split into a, a new configuration of groups for our third day of class. It's called the day three group simulation. So we're gonna take and, let's see, we're gonna join, there's a thing here called people, let me go back. So if you click on people, you click on groups, you're gonna see there's running buddies um, and there's the agile teams. You should see both. So here's the running buddies and then here's the agile teams. You should be able to join the team. I, I've seen this work and if it doesn't, please tell me, but you should be able to go and take two of your buddy groups and make one Agile team out of them. That should work. And in this simulation, we're gonna be working as an Agile team. So what you'll do is within your team, you're gonna each choose a role. There should be four roles. Um, there's the operations specialist, the product owner, the developer, and the quality engineer and each one has a different job. It doesn't really matter which one you choose, so don't sweat too much about this. And in your team, you just need to have one of each. So you're going to be signing up for something called Heroku. I'm gonna show you what that is. It's a website called heroku.com. When you go to heroku.com, you'll want to sign up for a student um, you'll want to sign up for a student account. So if you click sign up right here, under role, you should choose student, okay? It won't require you to enter a credit card or anything, so you shouldn't have to. If you do, let me know. The person who's the operations specialist on your team needs to immediately send me their email address they use to sign up. And I'm gonna add them to a team that they're gonna be doing some work in today. So I'm gonna show you what the operations specialist will be looking at. When they log in, they're gonna go up here to personal and they're gonna find the CIT 262 team. Now I'm not adding you all to this team because they charge me like five bucks a month per person or something which the school pays for, but if all of us did it, it would be a lot more money. So if you click on this group, if you're the, if you're the operations specialist, you're gonna to go to personal and then choose this team, and you're gonna see this steady deployment. This is called a deployment pipeline. When you all made your code changes yesterday, this is how the code was making it to the website. So this is called the development environment. And what happens is when you change your code, it automatically, gets deployed. See how it says auto deploys? 
and it's looking at GitHub, this particular repository. Now, if you wanted to take the change that was made last at 1015 by Besmer, if I go to Sorry if this embarrasses you, Besmer. Is this your color? Or can you tell me? You're muted. Okay, I think it. Yeah, that, that's all good. It's mine, but it's fine. Sweet. Okay. Nothing. Okay, now if I go to the next environment, what's it called? Quiz, real quick. What's the next one? I got a hint in my browser. After dev, where does it go? called staging. What does staging mean? Why would we call it staging? Staging means getting something ready, right? Yeah, Zibia. You're muted. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so usually I work for the website team on campus and they always do staging link where first before they push it to live. Very good. The staging link is something that they want to see before it goes live and then it's just yeah, that's what it, that's why we call it. So, so it's because it's getting ready for live, right? Yeah. Cool. So if we go to staging right now, it's going to be an old one that I did a long time ago. So if we want to take what Besmer did here and make it go to staging, then all you have to do in Heroku in the pipeline is you click promote to staging. Okay. So if I click that, then click promote. Now it says released. Okay, why was that so fast? Because if I go to staging right now, that took way less than two minutes. Any ideas? Because it's already ready. Yeah. There was a build that happened. Thanks, Divya. It's already ready. There was a build that happened back here. And it, it's just saved that build, and all it did was push it over. It was fast. Okay, so what's after staging then? Someone who hasn't spoken yet. Zibia gave us a clue. What comes after the staging environment? This is called live. Live or production. Oh, there's nothing there. Okay, so what do you think I need to do now? Someone help me. Someone unmute, tell me what to click. Probably promote to production. Thank you, good job. How long do you think it'll take, Gunther? Uh, probably less than 10 seconds, if okay. we're thinking about the other one. Yeah, it's the same process, right? So the point is we use the same process to get from dev to stage that we took use from stage to production. So we've already practiced making it live. We already know how to do it. You just click the same button, right? And it does it the same way. So did it work? It worked before. Do you think it worked this time? How many think it worked? Give me a thumbs up. Okay, let's see. Ah, what happened? An application error. It deployed now. Okay, it didn't work. <laughs> I don't know why. Um, that's interesting. So I'm going to go, I'm going to look at this environment. I'm going to look at settings, resources. Ah, I didn't give it a server to run on. That would be a problem. There we go. Let's reload. There we go. Cool. That was our first time going to production, guys. Thanks for go going with me through that. <laughs> uh, so if we do it again, it will work. Um, but you never know. You never do know. OK, we're going to break up into groups. Uh, does anyone have questions how we're going to do it? I just had a quick question. So yeah. for every website then, mm -hmm. Amazon, Google, whatever, it'll have the development, a staging, and a production section. 
Okay, so Amazon has their own staging website. Yes. That only Amazon developers will really work on and know about? Yep. Okay. Yeah, good question. I have a question too before we get going. So there's still like four or five different pull requests that are like need reviews. And you can, I mean, you can see them all. One of them is mine, for instance, and it keeps telling me that it's got a stale review or I, I, I don't know. Anyway, I don't know. I think the few of us that are still behind are going to have a hard time with the next part. If you, if like you said, it's going to build off of this last okay. part. Okay. Yeah. So why don't anyone who wants, thanks Weston. I appreciate yeah. you speaking up because this is your class. You guys get to choose what we do here. Okay. Ultimately. So everyone who feels like they could use a little help on the last lab. Can you stay here with me and then we'll work through stuff? Because I've done that with a few students over the last two days. Don't feel like you're alone. A lot of us have been in this situation. So does that work, Weston? Okay, cool. And then what we can do is um, those who are left, we can, you guys can be a group together for the next exercise, if that's okay. Okay, so what I need you guys to do is I need you to go to can I need you to go to canvas and I need you to get into one of the agile groups and each group should have four people. Um, can someone try it and tell me if it doesn't work. I'm really curious if it doesn't I'll just have to add you myself. I do have a question though. Yeah. So I created a Heroku account and then you said to click personal. Do we have to click new team or create a team? Oh, don't do, uh, oh yeah, yeah, up here. Okay, got it, got it, yeah. I'll, if you are the operations guy in your team, send me your email and I will add you to this group. So you don't have to create your own. Okay, well, I don't you know. <laughs> What's that? I don't know if I'm that guy, but. <laughs> you can be that guy, do you wanna be? Because <laughs> no. he was asking for a credit card after. No, that. you don't. You should not create a group because it'll charge you. Yeah, don't gotcha. do it. Gotcha, gotcha. Good question. Okay, has anyone joined a group in Canvas yet? The Agile group. Uh, yeah, it does work. Yes, I did. Sweet. Okay. Now, um, when you have a complete group, I'll send you into a different room. Okay. So, can you guys just tell me when you're ready? When you have four. Or five in the case of yeah. Lauren, Zibia, and where is she? She here? Your third member. Isn't it's the it same with my group as well. We have three running buddies. Okay, cool. So yeah, so you'll have five. Tell me when you've got your four or five some, and then I'll transfer you off to a separate room, okay? Group five is good. We got it. Group five. Thank you. Send you guys off here if I can figure this out. Okay, I'm putting Benjamin from Robert McGuffin, Chris Long, Josh Rattel, and Preston Gunter. Sound right? Yeah, that sounds good. Okay, so. okay. Uh, I just realized I can't send you all off until we know all the teams. Sorry. Um, Brother Murdoch? Yeah. Oh, you're, you're trying to do breakout rooms? Yeah. Um, you can create a whole bunch of rooms, like just extras, uh -huh. and, then, and then assign at least one room first, and then open all the rooms, and then you can add people to them afterwards. Okay, um, I'm gonna do that now. The extra ones. Um, let me just say one more thing. Yeah. Um, as far as this goes, this balancing, um, do you, what would you like me to help with? I'm a little concerned that, um, that focusing on this last lab, um, if you're focusing on the last lab, then the students that are ready to move forward are not gonna have direction unless you feel like the instructions okay. are, you feel like, unless you can feel like they can get everything from the instructions that they need. Would you like to hang out with those who are still working on the first one? Brother? Sure, sure. 
Okay, that would be awesome. Okay, away you go, team one, to your team five. Uh, should go. Did it work? Cool. All right, do we have any uh, Agile team two looks ready? David, Lauren, Nancy, and Zibia. Are we good? Or are you short one? Because is Nancy with us? Oh, Nancy, there you are. I'm sorry. Okay, cool. So I'm going to send you guys off to another one. Oops. I just messed up. What do you want them to do when they get in their groups? Work on the next lab. Okay, so just talk about the roles and assign roles and yes, and there read through the exercise and work on it together. Let's see, Weston, I think I accidentally assigned you to a room, so just ignore that. For the groups that have five people. Um, what are we going to do with the fifth role? Or who? They, they can choose. They probably should be a developer, actually. Okay, so two developers? Yes. Something's messed up with my Zoom. It's not letting me assign people. Sorry, guys. Um. Oh, so, so once you've got the breakout rooms created, then you have to go to the breakout room panel to assign them. Yeah, and when I click on it, it, it was working, but now it's um, doing something weird. I'm going to try it one more time. So you have you have many extra rooms created, right? Yeah, and when I click assign to, it's a blank white panel instead of letting me choose the room. Darn it. Um, trying to think of another. What if you click on the room itself? Is there something where in the room where you can click um, um, add to or something like that? Is that? So instead of assigning the person to the room, assigning, you know, going from the room, the other direction from the room to the person. No, no. it's not working. Okay. Darn it. Uh, gosh. I know there's a way to do it because I've done it before, but I maybe, I unless, you're, in, unless your Zoom is, you I know. I think that's a bug. There's something weird happening where it's a pop-up. It's supposed to tell me something, but it's blank. It's just this big, white, empty thing. Okay. I can't see it, but yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, you can close all the breakout rooms and start over. Uh, yeah, do that. Or um, you can try closing them all, making me the co-host or host. Wait, I don't. I don't know if I can do it as the co-host. I think only the host can do the breakout rooms, actually. Yeah, I think we're gonna have to redo them all, which is fine. No big deal. Who is having a hard time finding a team? I see Agile Team 3 has two people, Austin and Gunther. Are you guys, and then I see and, uh, whoa, no. So you guys are on your own right now, huh? Um, and then I see Agile Team 1 has three people, Andrew, John, and Ty. Can we have Austin and Gunther join Team 1? Can you guys do that? Sure. Okay, and then you'll have five, so you'll need two developers. We got called back. Yeah, we're redoing it, sorry. 
Uh, something messed up where I couldn't um, assign people to room. Oh. So it was kind of messing us up. So we had to stop them and start them again. Sorry about that. So uh, breakout room one had Benjamin, Chris, Josh, Preston, and Robert. And yes, sir. Okay, cool. Uh, Weston, it should not be moving. So just ignore if it tells you that. I don't know why. Just doing that. Now I'm going to assign Andrew, John, Purvis, Ty, and Austin and Gunther together. Where's Austin and Gunther? You guys, where'd you go? Um, I just from looking at these agile teams and the running buddies, um, just wanted to clarify that they should be joining a team with their running buddy, right? Yep, they should be. Um, so if your running buddy's not here, um, you'll have an empty spot on that team. There, we'll just assume that that running buddy's also going to be in that team. So will you tell us if they're not here? Um, and we'll add that person to your team. Yeah, good point. I don't know what's going on. I can't see Austin or Gunther on my, how do I close all, I'm just gonna delete them all. I'm gonna have to. Thanks for your patience, so Try guys. refreshing, try refreshing. Um, oh, on Canvas? Let's see, add a room, add a room, eight, nine, 10. Okay, thanks guys, all right. I'm gonna add Andrew, Austin, Gunther, John. Okay, next one. We're gonna have to, I'm gonna have to figure out a way to streamline this. It's way too much for you guys to sit here while we do this. David, Lauren, Nancy, Sylvia. I did it again. The pop-up became, oh, there it goes. Thank you. Christian, Christians. Josh, Ronaldo, Weston, okay. Okay. Almost done, guys. Benjamin. Broken. There we go. Ben, Robert. Chris, Josh, Justin. Okay, here you go. Have a uh, good weekend. Come back if you have questions. I was actually going to mention one thing. Sure. The Murdoch. So when I was, I was just looking on the quality engineer section, um, okay. and I think that's right but when i click on the steady hy or hyphen dev roku app mm -hmm. it brings it to the production stage i think oh the link's wrong in there yeah i think so but when i copied and pasted it it went to the developer section okay i got that bug again thanks for pointing that out yeah um and then the the stage section it should be empty right because there's nothing there stage should look like this so when I when I opened it the first time it looked like that and now when I open it it looks like a purple screen and it says there's nothing here yet. Okay. Let's see here. Um, but like I said, if you copy and paste the URL, then the developer section works at least. Uh. 
dev should be steady dash dev. Stage should be steady dash stage. Production should be steady dot. Okay. I have a question, Brother Murdoch. Yeah. So I, I'm not with my running buddy on that group. Okay. Uh, yeah. I'm with all the girls, and I it, think I need to be with Andrew as well. Yeah. So if you we, can we, Andrew. It, that's, I just noticed that, David. Um, he's in a group of five. He's in group one. He shouldn't be. He should, we should move him to group two. Can we do that? Yeah, you can um, move him to um, two. Can you change Andrew? Can you send Andrew to group two, um, yeah. Sean? He yeah. should get a notification. And then yeah, and if you can if you can put me in the break room too as well. Um, I if I can do that. Oh, you're already in there with the girls. You go back with the girls. Um, oh, okay. And then we'll move it. We'll send Andrew. We'll send Andrew a Zoom um, update to go to room two instead. Sounds good. Uh, we'll have two developers then, right? Yep. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for pointing that out. Yeah. Good no, job. Thank you. Good luck, Vesmir. Good luck. <laughs> so did you send, um, are you sending Andrew and Zoom over there then? Mm-hmm. Okay. I don't know. I, I was just going through the teams to see if there's anybody else who's not with their running buddy, and I noticed that one. Let's see if I can find where it should be. Breakout room. Should be in breakout room seven. Okay. I don't think Besmer's running buddy is here today. So Nathan. Yeah, Nathan. Okay. I don't see myself in any group as well. Oh, yeah. So we were having the students find their own groups. Um, is yeah so you uh your running buddy is who then uh, mine is uh I'm, well, one second uh, nathan okay nathan wadsworth It looks like he left the class. Okay. Um, so we're going to have to reconfigure for you. Um, Where are you seeing that? Did he... um, on Canvas, he's inactive. Oh, yeah. Oh, Sam did too. That's interesting. Those guys, they both need to graduate. Maybe they're taking it online. That's weird. I know, oh. I know, I know they're at the very end. They need this class, so... Huh. I know those guys. I'm surprised they dropped. Yeah. Okay. So we need to have Besmer find a new running buddy and an agile team. So for now, let's see. There are there is only one team you can join, which is Agile One. I'm gonna send you over there, okay, Besmer? Okay. And you'll probably be a second developer. Now, as far as running buddies, we'll have to work on that. Don't let me forget. Can you we send can, me an email about it? Okay, okay. We could we can potentially break up a three a group of three. Yeah. Um, hey Josh. Josh, have you been here this whole time? I'm sorry. Did we not get you into a group? I'm not hearing you. Sorry. Are you talking? Um he's in the chat he said yes in the chat i, I think yes he's been here the whole time oh, internet, internet problems <laughs> got it that makes sense that explains it okay so let me see here one second uh josh i think i'm we're going to move you to a group as well just hold on one second so besmer i'm putting him with austin you're able to connect david Six. Okay, but you should be able to Is go to uh, that you know, triangle one. Yeah. All right. Have a good day, Besmer. We can hear you now, Josh. Oh. How's it going? Yeah. Uh, when it comes to mine, uh, I joined a little too. When joining groups, I was a little too slow, so my uh, group uh, 
member joined a group without me, so who's yours? I build a uh, agile team forward. That's right. Is now. where my running buddy is. In the- okay, so you'll be a third developer. Okay. You said team four, right? Yep. Okay. I'm going to send you over there, Josh. Hope you have a good day. Sorry about your internet woes. I've been there. Yep. It's just where my parents keep the uh, router. It's constantly burning out because they put in the hottest room in the house. Oh, dang. (laughs) Well, it sounds like you're the right guy to help them fix that problem. Yes, but actually no, because there's nothing I can do about it. Because they're determined in their ways. (laughs) (laughs) Well, you're handling it well is all I can say. I would be more flustered than you, I think. Yeah. Well, I'm sending you over there now. Alrighty, thanks. Have a great day. You too. Thanks, bye. I think I might hop around, Brother Miller. Does that work? I agree. We need to do that. I was just looking at the running buddies. So my suggestion would be take it. Anyway, we'll talk about it later. Uh, Let's go hop around. Let's go hop around. Right. I'm going to send you to breakout room six. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Uh Uh-huh. Anything. Anything that that is blue. Does anyone have any questions for me? I'm just hopping around to different. Um, I just sent you my email for the thing. I'm just waiting for. Oh, for access. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, I've sent you an invite, Lauren. Okay. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Should it just show up on my account thing? Let's see. I'm not getting it. I think you'll get an email. I'll get an email. This my uh, I have a question about the role of the quality engineer. Okay. Um. So under that, it also says like enter the six digit code and upload all three screenshots. So is it just the quality okay. engineer that has to upload the screenshots? Yes. So, so this okay. is a group assignment. And so you'll be the one submitting the assignment for the team. Okay. Does that answer your question? Yeah. Okay. okay. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. Anything else guys before I jump off to another group? So what is the role that the product owner does? Good question. So what you're supposed to do is coordinate with the other product owners and also with Nancy, who's your quality engineer, to decide uh, when when your operations guy, which is it, uh, it's Lauren. So Lauren will uh, need you to tell her when to push stuff out. So basically, if if things are ready to go to staging, Lauren needs you to tell her. But you want to coordinate with the other product owners to make sure that it doesn't conflict with when they're making their change. Because otherwise, you won't get a screenshot. Does that make sense? Okay. So how yeah. do I know the other product owners? OK, that's a great question. <laughs> um, yeah, that's it. Yeah, go ahead. I was looking at 1093 since someone just made a change. I don't know who is that, so. Okay. So did they merge their change already? So do Um, I? That's that's what I'm looking at here. I think they did. Let me look at up exactly and see who is this. Okay. So I mean, in that case, then we'll have to wait for everyone to finish. That's, is that correct? Well, so what should happen is Zibia should coordinate with the other teams. Okay. So uh, and I know it's tricky, um, 
So we just need to know what the role the other teams are. And I just, I realized that just now that you guys don't know who the other product owners are. This is our first time doing this. So, um, so there's a couple of possibilities. Let's see. Probably what else? we can all, like all the product owners can be in a group like Slack or something. So we can like chat. Well, and you can use this chat window in, um, in Zoom as well is another okay. option. Uh, can I get all the product owners to please attend R? So I'll send that out. And then you should see an answer. I have a question. So for yeah. the invite that you sent me, so it says like, you know, show the next steps and then like invite team members, create new app and transfer existing apps. Is that what I need to do? So like invite now, everybody to it? If you've accepted it, you don't have to invite anyone because, okay. um, so all you need to do, can you see my screen still or no? Mm -mm. Okay, so if you go into Heroku, at the top, there's your little avatar and it says personal on the upper left. On the upper left? Uh -huh. I'm not seeing that. So, oh, yes, I got it, I got it. Just kidding. And then there's a little drop down there, the two up and down arrows. Click it and you'll see CIT 262. And click on that? Yeah. Okay. And then you'll see steady deployment. Okay. Click that. Okay. And that's where you should be. Okay, perfect. Got it. Cool. I am going to invite someone else who sent me their email. I have a question, Brother Murdoch. Yes, David. So the quality engineer is the one that is going to take the screenshot and is going to submit the assignment, or she has to take the screenshot, pass it to all of us, and then submit it uh, to complete this assignment? You said uh, quality engineer is, right? Oh, yeah, sorry, quality engineer, yeah. Yes, they're the ones doing the screenshots. So she, she needs to pass it to all of us and then we individually submit it or is only one person of the whole team needs to submit it? Only uh, Nancy will submit it. Okay. Put the word up. Yeah. I think the chat that you sent is just for us five. I mean, for, um, for us. Because when you click on everyone, you can see only our names here, like our group. Um, okay, interesting. It, I think the other class members haven't seen the text that you sent, I guess. I okay, know. I get what you're saying. Yeah, you're probably right. So let me think here. So what are our options? So we need to have you coordinate when things get made live uh, with Lauren. I think um, basically you should just do it. You should just make, tell her to move it um, whenever you guys are ready. So mm -hmm. I know that's weird and sounds like chaos, but um, basically, Nancy can be ready to load the website as soon as the change is made and take the screenshot. That's the best way that you guys can do. So, so Zibia, your job is to coordinate that effort within your own team. Does mm -hmm. that make sense? So as long as you guys can make the change and capture the screenshot, then you're good. Okay. It's okay if, other, if you don't do the coordination part. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. So when do I hit like the promote staging and that stuff? So you, your developers need to have their change on dev. Is it there? I'm not seeing anything. Okay. So then you need to work with um, whoever wrote the code change to make sure Ooh. it's on dev first. It sounds like, yeah, go ahead. Andrew. Okay. Andrew made the code change. Uh, and I, Yeah, go ahead. I, did it. I was about to, but I was just looking at how someone was um, matching something. So I was like, there's going to be a conflict. Yeah, there might be. Now your goal, remember, it's just a game. Seriously, it's not like you're hurting them, okay? It's not. Uh, so you just have to, you go and merge the conflict and then um, 
you have to fix the conflict and then merge it. Cool. Do you did that last time, right? Yes. Okay. Cool. And then are you having David review your changes, Andrew? I think so, because we are the two developers. Me. So you might you might have to do that. Yeah, I think you should have him review it. Is what I I'll have. go ahead and review it. Awesome. Okay. Let me just make the changes now. So Lauren, until they get it to Dev, you can't do your job. That's just how it works. Okay, and then where will it tell me that they've made it there, made it that far? So they will tell you. Once, okay. uh, once Andrew or David click squash and merge, then they should okay. tell you. And then you guys should see it there within two minutes on Dev. So you'll want to watch the UI, uh, reload the steady Dev URL. And when it, the color comes up to what it should be, um, then you know you're ready to promote it to stage and then production. OK. That's the easiest way to tell. There's more than one way. The other way is um, there is a there's a little number if you're in steady deployment. See where it says deploy today under steady dev? Oh, deployed today, yes. And then to the left, there's a alphanumeric string there. And that's a link. Yes. So you can click that link and it'll actually take you to the change that was pushed. Like um, the activity feed? Yeah. And let's see. That's what it pulled up for my end. Oh yeah, it is. And it actually doesn't tell you much. Uh, that number though is actually a number that corresponds with GitHub. Um, anyway, okay. it's a little tricky. But that's another way of knowing in the future if you're curious. But the easy way is just to reload after he squashes and merge until the color changes. That's what I usually do. So the color changes on the website or yeah. for on my end? On steady dev. Okay. You know what I mean? Sort of. So when I click on the steady dev link? Yeah. It just takes me to like the activity feed and like the metrics and installed ads and all that. Okay, stuff. so when I say steady dev, I mean this. Uh, you see that in the chat? That link? Uh huh. Okay, yeah. And there's another thing you can do to get to that in the future. In Heroku, under Steady Dev, there's a thing that says Open App. Mm -hmm. If you click that, it'll take you to the same place. OK. And same with Steady oh, and Production. OK. That works. OK. OK, I'm going to jump out. See you guys later. You're doing great. Thank you. Yep. Thank you.